What is going on everyone and welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all doing well. Now today I've got for you one phenomenal story from r slash best of Redditor updates. In yesterday's episode on my channel, I chose just one extended story from Pro Revenge, a little bit longer than usual, and you guys seemed to love it. A lot of you saying in the comments down below that you love the one story episodes that are a bit more chilled, a bit longer, and uh, yeah, you really enjoyed it. So thank you for the great feedback. And in today's, I thought I'd do the same. So I've got for you just one story, but once again, it is a classic. Without further ado, drop a like on this one if you're up for it. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. And here we go. This is r slash best of Redditor updates. My best friend says I owe her everything I have, including my boyfriend. Now, the original post for this one came on the 23rd of September 2018, posted in r slash relationship advice with this title. My 24-year-old female best friend, also 24-year-old female, is too handsy with my boyfriend, who's 26. And I think it's inappropriate. I know I should be careful calling someone best friend in a post like this, but I don't know how else to call Jesse. Our parents are great friends, so we grew up together and she kind of had my back in high school. Long story short, on the teenager food chain, she was on top and I should be on the bottom. But nobody messed with me because I was Jesse's friend. Jesse is one of those people who requires attention. I never minded though. Nobody's perfect, right? But now that I have my first real boyfriend, she doesn't know how to behave. Every time we're together, she's really handsy, always touching his arms, running fingers through his hair, complimenting him. And now she's even started with the prank spankings on the butt, you know? I just feel really uncomfortable with it. Maybe it's normal. I mean, Jesse has a lot of guy friends, so maybe this is okay. My boyfriend never thought much of it either. Am I just overreacting? She is super pretty, so maybe I'm just jealous. Anyway, yesterday something really threw me off. My boyfriend had to do some work and I had a book thing, a hobby. So we decided to meet later at a friend's house. They were getting together to drink and so on. My boyfriend finishes work early and calls me, but I don't really need him to come over to the book thing. I know he doesn't like it. So I just tell him to go to our friend's house. Then I start getting texts from Jesse, all like... Girl, you gotta come to this party now. Your boyfriend is wasted. Lol. Lol, we're so drunk. You need to come and stop us. I can't behave myself if you don't get here soon. And so on. The book thing took longer than I thought. And I was just getting mad and madder. But I am a very non-confrontational person. So I deal with it. I call my boyfriend when it's over. Because I don't feel like going to this party anymore. But I was his ride. So I ask him if he needs me to come and pick him up. He says, sure. I get there and I don't even go inside. I'm ready to release the hounds of hell on him. But he gets in my car and he's stone cold sober. I ask him if he was drinking and then show him Jesse's text. He gets super upset and says she was lying. He wasn't even hanging directly with her, but actually catching up with a friend who just came back to town. He says I should have texted him, letting him know what she was saying so that he could confront her about it since you don't ever seem to be able to give that girl some boundaries. Those were his words. Now I'm thinking that maybe I should just talk to Jessie. But maybe she was just drunk and annoying me because she wanted me there? I don't know. I mean, this girl was really nice to me growing up when she could have been a female dog. I don't like how she behaves around him, but at the same time, I don't want it to look like I don't trust her. Is there a polite way of going about it? Or should I maybe wait and see if this happens again? Or am I overreacting? Okay, so there we go. That is the end of the original post. Uh, quick comments from me. Nothing crazy here. It's obvious. You're not overreacting. And yes, you need to tell Jessie that what she's doing is highly inappropriate. That is just my thoughts off the bat. But one day later, we got our first update. Here it is. Yesterday, I posted here about how my best friend Jessie is a bit handsy with my boyfriend and it makes me feel uncomfortable. I am very thankful to all those who commented, especially the ones who encouraged me to say something. I don't like arguments, so those were very important to me. Thank you. Last night, we were alone because she wanted me to help her choose clothes for an event. I was at her place, so I thought I should say something. I wanted to. I was very polite and I just said that I knew she meant no harm, but I didn't feel good about it. So I asked her if she could tone it down. I should have said stop, but I guess I'm weak. She didn't really say anything mean, but her attitude was a bit off, I think. She was looking at me in a scornful kind of way 
and the way she smiled once I was done talking, it just felt weird. She didn't say anything else, but okay. And we just moved on to choosing her clothes and I left after. We were supposed to go and get something to eat, but she said she was tired. I'm not dumb. She was hurt. So I texted a common friend, more her friend than mine. And without getting into details, I just told him that I talked to Jess about something that was important to me, but that I was afraid she may have gotten the wrong idea from it. The common friend said, look, I don't want to get involved, but you should watch it. I asked what he meant and he said, nothing, just watch it. A little while after that, he texts me back and says, change my mind. I do want to get involved and then sends me a bunch of prints of text going back and forth between him and Jesse. It basically starts with him asking her if the two of us had a fight because I was worried. He was kind with his words. I don't mind him stepping in. And then just a non-stop stream of her being horrible. She says I had a big mouth and was judging her behavior because I'm a prude who doesn't know how to be around guys. How she taught me everything I know about having a life and how dare I tell her what she can or cannot do or how I should thank her for even having a boyfriend at all. Our common friend actually called her out for being rude here and no friend of mine. After the prince, he told me, I'm done with her. I give up and you should watch it. He also said it was okay if I told her I had the prince. I didn't though. I didn't know what to say. I mean, she's not 100% wrong, but even though I know that, it really hurts to read those. This morning, I wake up and see she texted me late at night. She says she knows that our common friend, Pete, sent me the prince, and she didn't mean to be rude, but it's ridiculous that I am jealous of her, because if she wanted my boyfriend, she could just have him. You want me to prove it? She said. So I'm being silly and should drop it, is what she meant. She ends it with kisses and a joke. So I don't know if she was being playful, apologizing, threatening, or being pragmatic. Whatever she's being, it's downright weird, is all I'll say. I didn't answer her yet. I don't know what to say. Should I even say something or should I just let it go? I wish I could talk to someone about this, but I'm very private. I usually go to Jesse with these things. Help! Well, all I'll say here, guys, is that, okay, you know, have a laugh, a bit of fun, joking around with your friend. But if you're then saying, you know, I could steal your boyfriend anytime I wanted, just like with a click of my fingers. And if you want me to, if you want me to prove it, I just will. Yeah, that's very malicious and and extremely odd behavior that is, yeah, not something any friend should be doing, clearly. Here actually are a couple of comments from one Redditor underneath that first update, which I think sums up what I'm saying here. They say... It sounds like this person is completely wrapped up in their own head and has a serious case of overthinking their importance in life, especially others' lives. Obviously, we're all going to tell you to drop her because she's not a desirable person to be around if that's how she acts and talks to you in person and behind your back. This person thinks they own you enough so they've decided to let you have your boyfriend. F that. Also, show your guy everything that's happened because guaranteed she's going to go after him. And then OP actually replied here saying, I suppose you're right. It just gets me, you know, it's a 20 year long friendship. I keep thinking that maybe this is a misunderstanding. She didn't mean it or she's going through a hard time and doesn't know how to deal with it. I'm just trying to make sure I'm not overreacting. So I needed some outside perspective. As for my boyfriend, I think he would turn her down quite fast. He doesn't really like her. He just hangs with her because of me. He's always saying that he'd rather not and all. So it's unlikely that they'd be alone together, but I will talk to him. Thank you for the heads up. And then one final comment from OP. Turns out she already went after him. I was stupid. To be honest, yeah, could have seen that one coming. This girl clearly has an agenda against you. Okay then, a couple of days later, we got the second update on September the 26th, 2018. My boyfriend is having sex with her. Oh my goodness me. A friend convinced some other friends to send me prints of text between themselves and either my boyfriend or best friend. They are pretty clear. I confronted my boyfriend. He looked lost, said he loves me, and it was just sex. He says that Jessie kept throwing herself at him, teasing him, and he said he didn't like her, but I still wanted to hang. He said he just had sex with her to see if she would move on and leave him alone, and that it only happened a couple of times. He says he won't do it anymore. He doesn't even like her. He loves me, asking me to please 
Forgive him. Sorry, I've got to interrupt here. What an absolute disgrace of a man your boyfriend is, OP. What on earth is he on about? I don't even like her. Just having sex, even though I'm in a relationship. What a good bloke. From the text, once I finally made it through them all, I think that Jesse went to the party where me and my boyfriend met because she wanted to hook up with him. She had it bad for him, but he didn't feel the same way. She was trying to get him to break up with me and then to get me to break up with him. It worked. As of yesterday, he is a single man. In some of those texts, they're talking about some of the hookups. I feel like throwing up. I blocked him because he was still trying to get in touch. I ghosted her, but she just sent me a message saying she just heard what happened and you know this is probably for the best, right? And I feel like freaking screaming. I don't even know if this is an update or just me venting. Thanks for listening either way. I mean, that's some update. Goodness me. I really did not expect your boyfriend to, to stoop to that level, but wow, there we go. Now, once again, here are a couple of comments that I picked out replying to the second update with some good thoughts that I agree with and OP's replies. First of all, someone has said, well, yeah, I would just ditch that whole friend group and start trying to find new friends. My God, that is effed up. <laughs> I completely agree. OP replied, yep, done and done. I think I'm being too permissive with the word friend. It was going on for months. Everyone knew and nobody had the decency to tell me. It was only the one friend who wasn't even that close who stood up for me. Going on for months? Oh my word. Another commenter said, You also can't make her hurt. She has no respect for you and clearly doesn't care, so it will be impossible anyways. It would have the same effect as a drunk stranger telling you that you're awful. Yeah, it might make you angry, but you didn't care about that stranger, so what they say is irrelevant. Also, I can't imagine anything so utterly not worth your time. The delightful side effect of just ghosting is that they will stew on it. They want the reaction, but they get none. They realize they lost all their power and never get to know and feel that satisfaction that comes from getting the reaction you wanted. Great point. 100% phenomenal point and also a very good analogy and, and simile with, with the drunk stranger. Because yeah, you're going to be like, well, it's a bit weird and annoying, but who are you? I don't really care. Clearly, Jesse feels the same way about you, OP, as, as much as that is a horrible thing to say. It is the truth. So yeah, I know you deeply want to get her back or anger her in some way, but I agree with this commenter. There's just no point. OP replied to this saying, I get what you mean. She is actually still texting me. I didn't mention one detail because it wasn't important, but we were all meant to be traveling together soon. My family paid for some of Jesse's expenses. She is messaging me about the vouchers since I have them all. This freaking woman can't even wait a day to ask. It's like she suddenly remembered she still needs me. I mean, I'm not giving them to her either way. The trip is off. Can't she tell? I'm very much thinking the silent treatment will be the way to go, I guess, long term there. I think she just realized she needs me for the trip and that's why she's been aggressively trying to contact me. Now she's saying that she liked my boyfriend first and I was the one who stole him. So she is the one who should be mad. I know I should just block her everywhere, but is it petty that I'm having fun watching her squirm? I wanted to have the last word, but not saying anything is driving her crazy. Now, this next Redditor mentioned about what I said earlier while reading, to be fair, saying, he said he just had sex with her to see if she would move on and leave him alone and that it only happened a couple of times. Says he won't do it anymore, doesn't even like her. He loves me, asking me to please forgive him, lol that is one of the stupidest things i've heard it's like saying hey babe i jumped off a cliff because somebody was really pestering me to do it <laughs> then they say i feel for you op but what an excuse i mean yeah imagine saying that oh fine i'll just have sex with you and then you'll leave me alone seems pretty likely op replies saying that they actually almost fell for it how pathetic is that he was saying he cared about me it was just a mistake he thought she'd back off and I felt it was a bad decision on his part, but maybe it made sense and I could forgive him. Then he says something like, and I didn't even like her. You were the one who always wanted us to hang. And that is where my brain joined the party and was like, is he seriously trying to blame this on me? Yes. Yes, he is. He was trying to gaslight you. All right, then a few more comments here from OP about the upcoming trip. I'm actually interested as to why OP thought that wasn't uh, key information. Like, clearly it is, right? And also, have a look at this. The most disgusting part, OP says, is that it's a trip that we take together with my boyfriend and some other friends. 
so she really thinks i would let my family pay for her to go on vacation with my ex who she cheated on me with i'm starting to think this woman is sick like for real and op has also here given us a little bit more context about pete and his role in kind of proving or i guess showing op what was really going on she actually says that it was all pete really discovering the severity of the situation after jesse texted op saying that she could get my boyfriend if she wanted to i just answered back what the f jesse and she lolled as if it was a joke but then pete texted me asking if i was alone he was really kind and told me everything said he had the proof and asked if i wanted to see it and i of course said yes so he'd actually gone after our friends and convinced them to send the screenshots to the prince he's really well liked by everyone and he was the one who said that's enough pete is gay by the way just in case anyone jumps the gun like my mum did and think he did this because he's interested in me or something he's not he's just a decent person i guess the point here being that everybody in the group or a lot of people in the friendship group knew about this i mean if there are screenshots between jesse and other people in the group and your boyfriend or your ex-boyfriend op and other friends in the group and nobody is telling you this apart from pete who finally said that's enough op has to know i mean what sort of friendship group is this and yeah it brings me back to another commenter from before who said are these really your friends come on you need to look for a new friendship group and i agree a little bit more info here on pete he convinced three other friends op says to send him texts between them the three friends and either jesse or op's boyfriend so that he could have proof because he thought that what was happening was disrespectful and somebody should tell me there were prints of texts between two friends and jesse and one other friend and my boyfriend they were pretty clear okay so that is the number we're looking out for there three friends jesse your supposed best friend and your boyfriend five people who i presume you thought you could trust a lot all going behind your back and knowing about this obviously some worse than others but still is it that much worse one of your friends not telling you about this than jesse and your boyfriend i mean yeah they're the ones that are doing it but by not telling you this information they're withholding so much from you that they could easily just tell you like i don't get it why not just tell you obviously they're not as bad as jesse and her boyfriend but there are levels to this it's like when there's a bully in school right and a lot of other people know the bullying is going on but but don't inform a teacher or, or don't tell someone to to help out and you know help out the kids that are being bullied they just stand there in silence who's actually more in the wrong here because the people that just don't say anything could stop the bullying in a second yeah the bully's the bully but there are other witnesses that could do something about it that they're choosing not to and in my opinion that might be just as bad all right then a few more points from op before we get on to the third and final update which by the way is coming up jesse especially op says didn't seem to care about hiding it at all my boyfriend's texts were mostly wondering if i'd noticed something and wanting jesse to back off while saying she was hot etc goodness me there was no 100 percent confirmation on his side it wasn't a chat between him and one of his closest friends so it was kind of generic but when i confronted him i said i had the screenshots without saying what they showed and he just confessed now look i really appreciate those screenshots it was ultimate evidence but i don't think they actually did it for me it's a pete thing you'd have to know him to understand he is the stand-up guy who is everyone's friend he is a huge people person i think they sent the prince because it was something for him you know he was the one leading the charge and dealing with consequences if it were just me i don't think they would have done it all right next up a little sort of interlude here an edit from op which is extremely wholesome talking about reddit as a whole here we go op says i don't want to sound melodramatic or sappy or anything but you all brought me to tears we keep hearing about how it's insanity to rely on the internet for personal connections but i just lost a boyfriend a best friend and a whole group of friends and instead of feeling alone, I'm more and more feeling like, frick, yeah, that was the right thing to do. I'll be okay. Yeah, it still hurts, but not as much as it would had I really been alone. I can't even begin to thank this sub. I really don't know what to say. Even on my previous post that didn't get as many responses, it was some of the comments there that made me approach the cheating thing, knowing I had to break up and move on. So it changed my life in this moment. 
And considering I'll be doing a lot of soul searching on toxic relationships, this probably changed my life for good. So thank you all so much for reaching out to a stranger. This community is so precious. Okay then, so here we go. The final update posted on October the 2nd, 2018. OP says, I said I'd come back if anything relevant happened. And here we go. There's a third update, so I reckon something has happened. My ex-boyfriend kept trying to get in touch through common friends. They kept asking me to unblock him and at least hear him out because he was really sorry. He loved me. He was a mess. He didn't mean to. Someone even went as far as to ask me if I was really sure it happened. They offered to send me prints of texts where he was talking about me so I'd see how he always had great things to say and how much he cared. But I've had it with the print screen drama for life and said no. To the ones who insisted, I told them I wasn't unblocking him. I had nothing to say or hear. And if they kept pushing me, I'd block them too. I ran into my ex-boyfriend at this book thing I go to, that hobby of mine. Maybe I'm being presumptuous, but I think he went there for me. He didn't really have any business there, but I'm just speculating really. No, that's not speculation, that's true. You said earlier that you didn't even ask your boyfriend if he wanted to come and join you because he doesn't like it. So yes, he was there for you, 100%. Anyway, the boyfriend asked if I had a few minutes for coffee. I said I was late, which was a lie. He walked me to my car. He looked so good, smelled great. He was so sweet. He was even wearing his hair the way I like it. I feel horrible because even after everything, I still like him. He apologized some more, said he knew I needed time and space, but asked if I consider giving him another chance because he would wait for me. He said he'd never talk to Jesse again and would act like they had restraining orders against each other. And I just found it really funny how everything he was saying required me trusting him, which I don't. So I told him I wasn't interested anymore and he should move on. I wish I'd said something snappier or wittier, but I had nothing. This was on Saturday and I haven't heard from him or friends since. I think that was that. Jesse also kept trying to talk to me. Like OP said in the comments, there was a trip coming up. It would have been me, Jesse, my ex-boyfriend and a few friends. Since Jesse couldn't afford it, my parents paid for most of her expenses. I mean, yeah, the fact that she still now feels like she is owed that trip is just mental. She must have remembered this right after everything went down and panicked because I had everything. The vouchers, the emails, credit card info. She went crazy. She even showed up at my place. I wasn't home and my roommate told her to F off exact words. I didn't block her at first because I admit I was having some fun watching her despair. I talked to my mum and she was amazing. She told me I should cancel everything even if it cost us money. It was fine. So I did. And for one last bit of print screen drama, I printed all the emails I got confirming cancellations and sent those to Jessie with the word bye before blocking her. Oh, that is lovely. My roommate's been amazing. We were never really close and now I don't even know why. She cancelled plans with her friends to stay with me and invited me to go out with them next weekend. There you go. Lose a couple of friends. Well, friends in inverted commas. Gain a real friend, your roommate. That's phenomenal stuff. A few of you suggested I see a therapist and I did yesterday. I really liked it. It was just one appointment and I mostly just talked, but it felt good. She gave me homework. She talked a little about unhealthy and abusive relationships and asked me to think about my friendship with Jesse and try to point what was healthy and what was unhealthy about her. It made me realize that she was never actually really my friend. She was taking advantage of me for years and she even had me thanking her for it. My therapist also told me about this saying, I think that's what it is, called the narcissist prayer, which goes something like, that didn't happen. If it did, it wasn't my fault. If it was, I didn't mean it. And if I did, then you deserved it. Which is totally how Jesse is handling this whole thing now. Wow. That is actually an unbelievable phrase. I like that a lot. So, good riddance indeed. And a final piece of gossip. Pete talked to me yesterday. He's checking up sometimes. He's a good guy. Again, he is gay in case someone is still thinking this might turn into romantic comedy. I mean, to be fair, it would be pretty amazing if it did. But yes, he's gay. He said that Jesse was super sure that since I broke things off, she and my ex-boyfriend would hook up right away. But apparently he doesn't have the same plans and that freaked her out over the weekend. 
Pete says he really is a mess and went out drinking hard four nights in a row to the point that he had to be carried home by his pals. And yesterday, they all went out for lunch at this burger place. Jesse was going to run her fingers through his hair or something, and he just pushed her away and told her to stop and to never touch him again. Great that now he manages to do that, huh? Yeah, exactly. A little bit too late. I guess in the end, he really did like me in his sick way. The thing is, I don't want to be with someone who likes me in a sick way. I want to be with someone who likes me in a healthy way. I think I deserve that. I'm also thinking about taking the money I got back from the trip to go somewhere else by myself. I haven't decided though. Anyway, this will be the final update on this. Since it's unlikely that I'll have anything new to add. Now, I think I just need some time to heal and let go. You know, I might come back in a few months if there is reason to do a yay life is awesome now post But I wanted to post this update now because I wanted to end this whole story on a bright note And of course, thank you all again You are the best and there we go guys That is gonna do it for this one another phenomenal story and i've used the word phenomenal a lot in this episode and the last But I feel like it's the most apt word you know, again, just great stuff. And what I love about this one as well is I, I do say it enough. I do say it enough. I know, but it does show the power of Reddit. And I agree with OP. People would say or, or have said, and perhaps I used to say it in the past, that asking internet strangers for advice and, you know, opening up to the internet is weird. And it's insane, as OP said, and it's not going to get you anywhere. Well, actually, no, I feel like you know, with every passing year, people are now starting to understand the power that the internet has as a, as a force for a community that you can now build real relationships on here. And if you want some genuine advice, sometimes actually the best place to go is the internet. A subreddit like r slash relationship advice where people don't have a vested interest. They're just seeing things for what they are and can give you some real tips. You know, no bias, just say, this is what's going on. Jess is a narcissist. Your boyfriend's terrible. You need some new friends. It's tough love. But I think as we can see in this situation, sometimes that is what people need. And uh, yeah, I really hope there is actually one final update in a few months from OP saying thanks to Reddit and, and thanks to also herself being being brave and dealing with this stuff in the right way. Her life is now awesome. How cool would that be? Anyway, guys, really hope you enjoyed this one. If you are watching on YouTube and you're still watching, have a look down right now at the pinned comment and think about that. It's just, it's just, I feel it's, it's just a great phrase, isn't it? I had to write it in the pinned comment because it's so good. Once again, that didn't happen. If it did, it wasn't my fault. If it was, I didn't mean it. And if I did, then you deserved it. I'll tell you what, if you guys ever hear something like that or, or, or words or actions to that effect, now you know, you're dealing with a narcissist. And there we go.